it's it's the signature nosy look Mbali, hi hello hi. hello how are you good. good 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 so we're waiting on hakim and david okay. to join us so we can have a four-way conversation but thank you for so much for being here so early um, thank you. and on time we really really <laughs> appreciate that um somebody is called tumamina shopping uh we like that i love that idea so you must be a personal shopper so anybody who's interested in Tumamina shopping, I see she's here or she's here. So that's really lovely to know. Let me see. There's a request coming through. In the meantime, let me say hi to Zikona. Hakim is, uh, has pulled through. So let's say hi. Let's get, let's accept. Oh, Hakim, I'm trying to accept. Um, oh, you should, oh, there you are. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How do you do? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm so excited that you're here. I, I'm seeing another request. Let me check if it's Ndavi. Um, oh, right. okay. It's Runaway. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, Tumamina says, hey, yes, I'm a stylist and a personal shopper. Go get in touch. We need the personal shoppers in this life. Um, <laughs> let's do some business together. So, we're waiting for Ndavi, but I think we're going to kick off. And then when Ndavi joins... We'll just add her because I know we only have an hour. And guys, I have like so many questions from, from every, everybody for you. So I don't want to, I don't want to hold you, but I want to first start off by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for joining us on our 40th episode. Uh, thank you so much for availing yourself. Again, we really appreciate it. All the way to say is, hey guys, I'm in Australia and it's 3 a.m. And I just couldn't miss this. So, you know, it's 3 a.m. in Australia and she's still here. All right. Fabulous. So, what are we talking about today? Today, can you guys still hear me? Am I yes. good? Am I audible? Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, today, we are talking about how to finish strong, right? So, it's that time of the year where we're all kind of like, uh, on the edge of burnout, we're kind of like, I don't know how I'm going to make it to the end of the year. And we all just want to figure out, you amazing people, what do you do to make sure that you're not burning out, to make sure that you are, you know, finishing the year as you had intended, to make sure that you're bagging the goals that you set out for, and that as you do December, you're doing December with a full heart, right, and feeling really great and accomplished so that's where we are today um i can um i keep seeing um somebody called principal truth i'm um, trying to join us but i know that's not in Davi. so principal truth we won't accept you today um but ndumi so if you can ping Davi, Davi, sorry and just let her know that um we're on and then we'll take it from there but let's start off with mbali mbali i've got questions but before we get to the questions Talk to us a little bit about, you are the wellness guru, right? You are the person who helps us figure it out in the workplace, make sure we've got healthy boundaries, make sure that we know, you know, our employers are, employers are treating us right. But what can I do for myself yeah. as an employee to make sure as I approach this time of the year that I am doing it healthily, without burnout, and to my best form possible? Yeah, yeah. So I don't particularly like the term finishing strong. I like saying finishing with intention, right? Um, because finishing with intention means that you are mindful of yourself and the tone that you want to set in terms of how you finish the year, right? So I like saying finishing with intention. So being clear exactly about what your intention is for the remainder of the year, being clear about what outcome and results that you want to drive as opposed to um, allowing external circumstances to then determine how you should move for the rest of the year. So it's an inside out type of job. It's an inside out exercise where you have clarity on intention, clarity on outcome, clarity on results. So 
what can you do? I think one of the things that you already highlighted on that are very, very key at this time of the year and as a way to preserve your energy, as a way to preserve also just your sanity at this time of the year is around healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. right? I think this is the time where you have to enforce those boundaries and be more strict about them just because a lot of us are running on low energy levels at this time of the year. A lot of us are burnt out or burning out at this time of the year so we're likely to be more irritable we're likely to be more impatient we're likely to be more tired we're likely to forget things a lot more often experience a lot of brain fog potentially so at this time of the year i think the boundary setting that comes with the level of awareness self-awareness and that comes with intention of what it is that you're trying to get to allows you to be then able to manage your energy levels and to be able to manage expectations of the people around you. Mbale, I absolutely love that. So you're saying um, it's more about finishing with intention and I'd lo I love the idea of intention because it means, as you said, it's about your awareness and your consciousness about this is where I'm actually going to finish. And you're saying to us, you don't like the vocabulary of finishing strong. And I love that, right? Because we, we learn new things. Uh, and maybe mm -hmm. if we get time, I'll share a little story with all of you at the end as to, you know, why I use the term finishing strong and where that comes from. But I love the fact that you're giving us new language. Um, and you know, the hard thing, Bali, and I just want to see it, is that I can imagine a lot of people who work for people, so who are employed, um, your boss wants to get the last thing over the line before the year is finished. And suddenly, you, you know, there's a lot more on your plate than you anticipated. Mm -hmm. And also for some of us who are entrepreneurs, clients suddenly want to, you know, suddenly, you know, spend that last bit of budget. And what that means is suddenly you've got new work that you hadn't planned for. And the discipline of being able to say, I don't have to take on every single thing um, mm -hmm. that uh, lands on my desk and the discipline of being able to say no. So thank you for that, Bali. Let me go to Hakim. But as I go to Hakim, let me say hi to Ndabi. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate you. And I know that so many people are keen to hear what you do. But Hakim, uh, you must have some uh, power tools in your toolbox that you're using to make sure that you're, I, I'll say finishing strong, Bali will say finishing with intention, but just ensuring that you're not burning out and that you're already completing the year in the best way possible for you. How do you do that? All right, so the, thank, you, thank you for having me once again. Um, thank you for having me on the panel as well. Uh, hi to the ladies and everyone who's joined us on, the, on this live. So uh, the tools that I use, are uh, they very simple, right? Like we, if you're, if you're a goal-oriented person, you know why you started. You, you know why you started never losing sight of why you started and how, how, what you want to finish with is very important. And that allows for you to, that allows for you um, to measure your performance and measure your expectations. So the fastest way for you to calibrate is to breathe through a lot of situations. Right, we had the like final push. You're going to lose your nerve. Some people are going to demand a lot of things from you, but you, we need to learn how to breathe. And I think I said this in the in the last uh, mentorship Monday that I, that I that I did with you guys. You need to learn to breathe breathe through a lot of situations because breath controls everything. Breath controls your nervous system, and if you breathe really well, if you don't take shallow breaths and you take deeper breaths and you take and you, you can count them. You can count to like eight breaths or 12 breaths or 16 breaths, just deep ones to recalibrate, right? You can do this at any time of the day, by the way. You can do this in a heated moment. You can do this just when you're waking up. You can do this in commute. You can do this in the office. You can do this at the end of the day to just ease your nervous system because the nervous system packs in a lot of our stress, right? Mm -hmm. Breathing deeply and releasing. You can breathe sharply. You can breathe slowly. You can breathe you can breathe intermittently, you can breathe really fast. It doesn't matter how you do it or where you do it. Just the fact that you're doing it allows for you to regain that center, right? Mm -hmm. Stress is going to cow a lot of us until we learn how to control it and how to update it. Like you can learn how to like press pause at any goal. At so any is it me or am I, are we losing like, our team a little bit? Thing. We're losing yeah, him a bit. Yeah, we're losing him a bit from my side as well. Okay. 
So, Hakim, let's 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 just see. Are you back with us? I think your network just went a little bit fuzzy. Hi. And my Wi-Fi, so I'm back on Wi-Fi oh. now. Please tell me if I'm connected properly. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's a whole lot better. And and you were making the point about you know the different types of breathing to really um you know bring control to our nervous system. Yeah. So you take you take four sharp breaths, and then you take four easy breaths. Right? Then you take four sharp breaths and you take four easy breaths. It's just it, it's a loop that repeats itself over and over. Four sharp breaths, four easy breaths, four sharp breaths, four easy it recalibrates your nervous system, it eases your heart, and it allows for you to remove the mental fog. So just do that. If you do that repetitively over and over and over and over again, you'll have a lot more control over your being, and that control allows for you to respond instead of react from a very harsh place. Sure. Right? I so love that. So we need Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that, Hakim. We're going to call it the four by four, right? So everybody, <laughs> guys, remember, we are just four by fouring over the next couple of weeks. Four sharp breaths, four deep breaths. Um, Tebuko mm -hmm. is saying he's already trying it where he is because he's got a big job uh, on his shoulders. I'm sure he's working throughout this festive season. But there's something else that you said, um, Hakim, that I want us to think about, uh, and that is that, you know, you you it is possible um for you as you think about why you started it helps you to manage your expectations and to yeah. to calibrate your performance mm -hmm. and i think that's such a big thing right because we potentially always start with big bang ideas and then we don't always take into consideration things that have changed yeah. conditions that have changed along the yeah. way that actually make yeah. that big bang idea achievable at a smaller scale or sometimes even achievable at a bigger scale. And the and I think the self-awareness to pause and to calibrate your own expectations, not what everybody else expects of you, not what everybody else is watching, but your own expectation is really something I'm loving from you know what I've heard you say. Um, I just want to say a quick thing. So today I was having a coaching session with one of my mentors. Yes, I have mentors. Um, and one of the things she was teaching me today was about choosing my energy. Um, and that, you know, I get to choose my energy because I have the ability to pause, just as you're saying, to take stock of how I'm feeling and the energy in my body and to choose a different energy for the next moment. And that's probably something, you know, that I struggle with. If I'm having a bad day at work, everybody's having a bad day, you know, if, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm having to learn to stop doing that and to give my family a different energy than the energy that I was carrying with clients and so on and so forth. Navi, let's, let's bring you into, into, into the conversation. And literally at this point, we're asking the same question. What yeah. does Navi do to make sure that, you know, she ends her year in the way she had envisioned it? When you were sitting doing uh, your forecast for the year and, you know, visioning and vision boarding and so on, how do we make sure that that picture that you drew then, mm -hmm. to some extent, correlates with how your year is going to end? Yeah. Thank you so much, Nozi. First of all, I want to say hi to everyone and sorry for being a bit late, but I'm so happy to be here and so happy to be a part of this conversation, especially at this time of the year. I think everyone actually really needs to be a part of this conversation and actually just, you know, help each other navigate these last few weeks. Um, but I must say for me, I'm coming from an entirely different perspective. As you can imagine, being in South Africa, your, your reign is a year, but it starts in August and ends in August. So you're kind of in a bit of a disconnect with the actual calendar year of January to December. So I feel like my year started last year, August, and it just kept going. And I finally had a year end um, this year, August. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's really going back to what did I actually want to do in this year? You know, I didn't even get the time to set those goals in January, but it was more of last year, August. Um, so I think I speak more from an entrepreneurial perspective because I think they have this more flexible timing. Um, but I think what's important for me is to look at what it is that I wanted to do in the beginning. Um, but what I stood out is to not be afraid to start new things now because I've realized that I have this I have this um, tendency that when I'm reading a book right when I'm getting towards the end of the book I start to read slower 
and slower that I actually never actually finish reading the book. And I'm sure other people also have the same tendency. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing now at the end of the year. You start to procrastinate and you're just kind of waiting for the year to end and you're not doing new things. But it's actually okay to finish the book and start a new one. So that's what I'm trying to say, that it's okay to finish the book and start a new one because you can actually utilize that momentum of mm. being on the go. And when we put down the book, when you pick it up again next year, you don't have to figure out, okay, what am I doing? You know, you're not in that hype of new year, new me. You have already set the foundation for some of the things that you actually want to do in 2024. So you pick up from the middle of the chapter, which is so much easier than needing to still dig deep and figure out what it is that you want to do. So I think I'm taking it from that perspective of, you know, I'm already at a go. What are some of the important things that I need to lay down? Um, for instance, with my Edu Night Talks, I had taken a pause to rebrand and, you know, get the right people on board. And next year, I won't be asking myself, what am I doing this year with Edunite Talks? It'll be a matter of, okay, we've laid the foundation. And now when the year starts, we go with what we already started. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So you, you're talking about, you know, building on the momentum that's already there. And as an entrepreneur, we all know that, you know, our financial year isn't always the same as the calendar year. So sometimes we do work mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, against financial, uh, financial years. But it's interesting because mm -hmm. that point where the calendar year and the financial year meet can be a lot of tension, right? Uh, even for as an entrepreneur. But I love how you're setting your own year, right? And saying mm -hmm. my year doesn't have to, you know, conform uh, to the calendar year. Uh, you can have your own cycle of, of, of energy and momentum. So I want to get to these questions and I want to, before I want to get to the questions, I want to tell you a quick story about, you know, what, where my inspiration, uh, especially for this conversation comes from, and then I've got to get to your questions. So a couple of years ago, maybe a good 10 years ago, I came across, guys, I've told the story a hundred times, so please uh, excuse me if you've heard it, but I just love it. About 10 years ago, I came across this, the story of John Stephen Aquari. And basically, he is a long-distance runner from Tanzania, and he was going. To, he was running in the 1986 Olympics. I hope you can. Keep, you can't hear that it's uh, thundering around me. He was running in the 1986 Olympics in Mexico City, and he was doing a marathon. So it was the absolute last event of the Olympics. It's the long-distance marathon, and everybody took off. And within the first, because the marathons are 42 kilometers. Within the first five kilometers, he got injured. He got, uh, he got caught up in a scuffle and he fell and he injured, dislocated a shoulder um, and also hurt his leg um, a bit. Um, and everybody was kind of like, sure, that's a bad injury, right? So if this guy stops running, nobody's going to blame him. You know, it absolutely makes a lot of sense. And this guy just kept on running. And the, end, the, the moral of the story is this. He didn't come first. He didn't come second or third. This is not one of those stories where the injured guy becomes the hero. He didn't come 10. He came last. But here's the thing. The guy who came second to last was like at least an hour before him. And so what people started to do in the stadium, they started leaving because they are like, well, you know, this guy who continues to run, we don't know why he's running, but Tina, we're going to leave because, you know, everybody else has finished the race. And some of the journalists decided they were going to stay behind because they're like, oh, we want to get and what's going on in this guy's head and why is he still running when it's perfectly okay for him just to drop out? And he was saying he didn't want the recovery vehicles and all of that. So an hour later, he hobbles across the finish line. And one of the journalists rushes up to him. I think it was a BBC journalist and it said to him, why did you finish? Like, why did you keep running? And so to your point, um, Hakim, about understanding your why, he said, my country didn't send me 5,000 miles to start a race. My country sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. And to your point, Mbali, about intention, there was nobody in the stadium. So this wasn't about people clapping him on. He wasn't doing this for anybody other than the commitment he had made to himself that this is the thing that I'm actually going to do and I'm going to finish. And so that's why, that's why I, call, I talk about finishing strongest. That's what the video is called on YouTube. Um, but I'm so personally inspired by that because it, it helps me to realize that 
one, I'm, my year is not against anybody. I'm not racing against anyone. Yeah. I'm not finishing because mm -hmm. other people are there watching me, expecting me to finish. Mm -hmm. I'm finishing because I know why I started. Yeah. I know what I committed to. Yeah. And, I know, and I know that even if I get injured, even if things don't work out the way they were supposed to, even if I mm -hmm. come last, um, if mm -hmm. I see it through, that's the thing that gives me a lot of fulfillment. So I'm done now to your stories. Anyway, I love that story, guys. Um, so Dipele uh, Pele is saying, I'm liking the concept of agility and flexibility from Dabi. The rigid following of checklists is not working uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of beautiful comments uh, that have come through. Um, there's one from Gila who is saying, um, how does one finish strong when the year didn't actually go according to plan? Uh, what if you've lost your job? What if you're having difficulty finding employment? Mm -hmm. How can one still have a positive outlook and carry it forward? So let me just start off with that question. Bali, maybe you want to kick us off. Is finishing strong a mindset thing? Um, or is it, is it about ticking actual things off? Like, so you don't have, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you are unemployed. Can you still finish strong in your view? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So finishing strong is a mindset thing. I think I, I look at a goal beyond the context of a year because um, you don't have control over certain circumstances. And I think it's important to be mindful of what is in your control. And so if you have set your years, I mean, your goals instead, um, according to the year, that can actually affect your perspective around when and how you achieve those goals. I understand, obviously, your goals need to be smart they need to be specific measurable they need to be relatable they need to be timely but it is important to be able to adjust your mindset back to the question of your why so why is it that you are doing what you're doing what is the result of the outcome that you're trying to achieve because that source of why is the source of purpose that source of why is the driving force and the energy behind you continuing to apply for a job even when you might not be getting a positive response it is the source of why you would reach out to your contacts um, and, and find creative ways of being able to solve your problems and so i think it's important to always to look inward in situations where we feel like there are circumstances around us that are happening that are beyond our control so look inward and you tap into your real intention again your real why and and what it is that you're trying to achieve by engaging in some of the activities and the things that you are doing um, yeah i think the source of of, of you know, a mindset is definitely your self-awareness and uh, being very clear about the things that you are trying to get to. Mm. Um, guys, can you hear me? Is Bali there? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, but it, it's a bit... Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit loud, muscle. but I can hear it, yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, it's so bad. I'm so sorry. Like, God, what's happening? Um, the so rain is now, like, finishing like, strong. But let me bring this question from Fizz. I want to bring it to you, um, Hakim. And Fizz is saying, how do you avoid being demotivated if your, your finish is not as strong as you had intended? How do you make sure that you don't then go into a slump? Because it's just not as amazing as you had envisioned it when you were setting your goal in the first instance. Yeah. So, so whenever we speak about motivation, I always ask how important is what you intended to do in the first place for you? How is, because important to you that's the reason you started that's the reason you went on with it and it might not be where you want it to be but always remember when you decided to do something there was an end goal in mind there was a, a um, there was a picture that you had in mind and that picture resonated deeply with your desire that's why you started it and that's why you continued with it right so the, the, the best way for you not to get demotivated is to always remember why is this thing important to me not to everyone, not how everyone is going to benefit from it, not how everyone is going to eat from it, not what you're going to look like at the end, but why is this thing important to you? Why did you start? 
Why do you want it? You know what I mean? And if 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 and when you do get to the bottom of why this thing is important to you, you're always going to re-trigger that motivation to say it. And you're always going to re-trigger that motivation to say, okay, cool, I'm not I'm not where I want to be, but when I get to the end of this, at least I have I have a set of things that I'm going to look at to interrogate, okay, point point eight and point Y, I didn't do really well. You never lose when you do something. You always learn. And I think it's very important to remember the lessons that are in doing what you intended to do are more important than finishing what you intended to do. Because the lessons the lessons in what you're doing are what's going to make you stronger, what's going to make you better. Especially, especially, especially if you do not personalize your mistakes. Your mistakes are not you. They're not your character. It's just something that you didn't do well. That's what a okay. mistake is. A mistake is something that you didn't do well. And you didn't do this thing well because maybe you didn't have enough energy, maybe you weren't committed enough, and maybe, just maybe, you didn't know what you were doing. Okay, so, so, one glass if you can still hear. No, nobody no. can hear. No, okay. <laughs> so, guys, I think we need to reach schedule because we can't hear anything. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, but maybe God doesn't want us to finish right now. Maybe he wants us to delay the finish. Um, okay, I don't know. I feel like it's getting lighter. I think it's going away. Just give me a second. Okay, cool. Yes. But my prayers are powerful, guys. My prayers are powerful. <laughs> so, so everybody's volume is up. Can we just double check that everybody's volume is max? I can. I can hear everyone. I can hear you. Okay. Um, I don't know if everyone can hear me. Yeah, no, I can hear, hear you. Yeah, so I'm seeing a couple of people are saying um, um, they can hear, but there's rain in the background. Um, and Tabi Seng is saying, you guys all stay in the north, clearly. So it's not raining in the south, clearly. Um, I don't know what is uh, what's happening, but it's, uh, it's, gotten a lot, it's gotten a bit better. So let me just paraphrase what I heard from you, Hakim, because I think it's important. You are saying yeah. to us that even when things don't go to plan, the learning and the lesson in itself is very important. So it's not about just ticking something off and saying, I'm done, but it's actually yeah. embracing the journey of going through whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. And so yeah. sometimes in our race to finish, we might miss the lesson in the pause moment and we might miss what it is that we're supposed to be learning. So. Dami, I want to bring you back. There's, there's, a, there's a question from Abo. And Abo is saying, with the holiday season approaching, it's always challenging to balance work and commitment to personal celebration. How are you maintaining a healthy work-life balance during the festive season? For Abo, clearly, is a social person who's always out <laughs> doing amazing things. I don't yeah. hibernate. I hibernate. I hibernate during the social uh, season. But do you have any suggestions for us about, you know, the social commitments versus uh, the commitments to the things that we had set out to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think also it's very important to to check your priorities with things like that. You need to know. Um, how much time are you willing to spend? Because um, either way, it's a sacrifice. How much time are you willing to spend on family and friends? And how much time are you willing to spend um, on what you want to do going forward? But also, it's important to look back at what you have done. How much time did you spend this year with um, your family and your friends? Because I will speak from a personal point of view. For me, family and friends are such a big part of my priority list. It's literally, it's God and then it's family, you know? So for me, that's high on my priority list. So all my goals and everything else would come after that, especially at the end of the year, because I dedicate the whole year 
to doing everything that's for my goals, my ambitions. So for me, end of year season is definitely family time um, because I see that I've used 80% of my year on all my goals and all my ambitions. So this last 20% is so important for me to, you know, give back to my community and my family and for them to pour back into me because that's also where I gain my source of strength, where I go back to, you know, being grounded again. So I think it's just important to weigh your options and what have you done throughout the year and how important is family for you? Because you might, you might find that for you, you don't even have that great family, um, you know, dynamic. You know, I don't know what your family situation is like, but um, for me, spending time with family is something that rejuvenates me. So it is something that I prioritize during the holiday season. Mbali, how, how do, are you a socialite during the festive season? And um, once December 1 starts, does your life and your social um, commitments go up? And how do you balance that with the things that still need to be done? So I completely echo Navi's sentiments here. I think priorities are key. So prioritize what is most important to you. And we've obviously heard, or we have previously heard um, the saying about filling your cup first before pouring to others. And so it's very important to understand what fills up that cup, right? Uh, being very clear about the things that energize you, that rejuvenate you, and also just finding that balance between um, social engagements and interactions um, with just recuperating and resting. I think we often um, underestimate the value and the importance of rest, mm -hmm. specifically around a busy time like the festive season. And so it's important then around that time to continue prioritizing things such as rest and to find different ways of resting because sometimes socializing with your family your friends within the context of your home for example could be considered as a form of rest so can you sometimes do certain things within um you know certain space or within one space at a given go as opposed to being able to separate the resting with um you know your social engagements with meeting with friends and family somewhere in between um, try to find the activities, I think, that you can easily combine, but also making rest, I think, as a, as a key um, priority throughout yeah. the festive so that you are able to come back rejuvenated and pour into your goals from a place where you are full and where you have intentionally engaged in things that fill you up. Hakim, I'm sorry so excited about this question and thank you Mbali to, for reminding us about the importance of rest during the season and for me it just comes back to boundaries right because especially um, in the festive season everybody expects that they have access to you as family they want to see you they want to be in, their, in your home they you know expecting to be entertained and to be hosted I actually found hosting not to be restful uh, at all actually because it's I'm not. taking care of my guests and I'm you know and then there's and then there's no help because you know the helpers are gone home then you're left with the house and it's just it's a drama that I don't enjoy um and so I tend to really hibernate during the festive season I really like to be just with my family um and you know okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna expose myself there have been years where I've not told people in Joburg that I'm in Joburg and made them believe I was in KZN and made the KZN people believe that I was in Joburg. Like just, so nobody knows where I am exactly so that I can just pop up on Christmas Day wherever I am and then we take it from there. But Hakim, there's a question for you from Nompu, which I love. Nompu is saying, I've picked up a pattern in my romantic relationships and that is around this time of the year, my relationships always get shaky and even sometimes lead to a breakup. Does, does that have anything to do with the fact that I'm struggling with burnout? What do you think? Uh, it could do with burnout, or it could do with the fact that you're dating someone whose priority isn't you around this time, or you're picking the, part, the partners who, who aren't prioritizing you, or you're not prioritizing them um, around this time, which could lead to a breakup, right? Um, I think when it comes to, when it comes to relationships, each and every single person has to take stock of what loops they stuck in, right? You have to take stock of what loops you're stuck in. You have to take stock of what um, character choices you, you, you gravitate towards. You might be gravitating to people that 
be good with you during the year throughout and you're helping them carry whatever load it is they carry and come December, you know, you're not necessary. You know, like we all need to do a personal audit of who we are attracting into our lives so mm -hmm. we can stop attracting negative people and we can stop attracting relationships that great when we're going to need them the most. You know, all of us have to okay. take, have to take stock of, of all of our relationships. I I want to stay here for guys a little bit because I'm like, I know who, maybe you're the problem because how do you keep attracting people where you're creeping up over and over. over and over again in December? That for me is a bit of a red flag. So, Gavi, do you break up with your people in December? Uh, what's your, <laughs> what's, the, what's your pattern? <laughs> how do you I really love your relationship with your commitment to, to the country around that time of the year? <laughs> no, I really, I really love what Hasim was saying about needing to check your pat your patterns that you are repeating, um, because it's so important. Um, we we tend to do the same things over and over again, and if the same thing keeps happening to you, it's important to to realize that you are the common denominator. So there are decisions that you are making that are causing this thing to constantly repeat itself. You know, um, I for one, I try to maintain my relationships. Throughout, it's the same, beginning to December, you know, we have those friendships where maybe you don't talk to this person as much during the year, but they understand where you are. It's not necessarily a breakup. They understand that at this time of the year, um, certain things, you're busy with certain things. Relationship-wise as well, I think you should have that foundation where you guys understand what is happening during December. Where are you, where are you going? Are you with your family? Am I with my family? But in that time, we, we stay communicating. You know, there is no confusion of, it's a breakup, um, we'll try again next year, or maybe I'll find someone else next year. There's a mutual understanding of what we're doing in that time of the year. So I think it's important that she checks herself to see what is it that she's doing, um, because it's a pattern that's constantly repeating itself. Mbali, what's your Jolo pattern uh, come festive season? We want to know, are you, are you also breaking up with people, <laughs> or are you like Davi and you're like, managing and making people understand and all sorts of things so firstly i have to jolla to be able to identify a pattern let's start there <laughs> <laughs> so in absence of someone i won't be able to know what the pattern is but i think a valid point though that um you know the person that shared the question is around the burnout i think she raised a very valid point around uh, what burnout can actually do in terms of our social engagement and social interaction. We know that when we are burnt out, we are a lot more irritable, a lot more impatient, we are not as mindful, we're not as intentional. And because of that, it can lead to certain dynamics uh, that are created within our social relationships. But then again, to the point around checking yourself or taking some form of accountability or stock of your pattern, it then would put uh, the person who, uh, who asked the question in a position to then say, how do I mitigate my burnout around this time of the year? If that is the actual reason that's causing the demise of my relationship around this time of the year, then what can I do from a burnout and burnout prevention perspective rather uh, to manage the fact that, um, you know, I may be, be, I may be a, a bit more irritable, I may be a bit more um, unkind during this time of the year because I'm impatient. So it does come back to that sense of um, taking accountability, taking ownership, um, and also just correcting in areas where you feel are contributing to the demise or the challenges that you're facing in your personal relationships. So you've, you've opened up a very important conversation, Bali, the one around burnout. So let's assume it's already happened, like it's too late. You've, you've, you've gone through the year in a way that wasn't um, the healthiest and come November, December, you're completely depleted. Very quickly in Bali, and then I'll go to Dabi and I came about it. How do you how do you tell your employee without feeling like you are letting the team down, you're being the weak link, that you are, you know, you're being weak by saying, guys, I've got nothing left. I actually I just mm -hmm. can't continue and see the year through. Yeah. Is there a helpful way that you can teach us and coach us around in terms of having that difficult uh, conversation with your employer? Yeah, yeah. 
So I think it comes with uh, managing expectations from the onset, right? So you might not necessarily say that I cannot do this task because I am burnt out. It is a question of, do I have the capacity? But sometimes it is important to use the language and the jargon that we have become accustomed to in the corporate space to allow us to have these conversations in ways that are conducive and in ways that are actually productive. And so when you are having a discussion around the burnout, I think a key reference point is making the conversation about capacity, making the, the conversation around quality of work, making the conversation around um, you know, deliverables and timelines, expectations, as opposed to saying, I'm actually burnt out and I'm completely tapping out. I think it also is important to be mindful of the culture within the organization that you work with. So if it is a culture that is safe enough and that creates that level of safety that allows for people to speak openly about challenges with burnout, challenges with their mental health issues, then of course, that's an easier conversation to then have you know with your manager but if it isn't the case i think it would be you know wise and tactful to then make the discussion around capacity management to then make the discussion around quality of work and deliverables and make the discussion around timeline expectation do you think that i would be in a position to deliver this during this timeline, knowing the capacity that I have at this point, and also with the expectation that the quality of work is still uh, meeting a certain standard. So um, I think there are more tactful ways to manage the conversation, depending on the relationship with your manager and as well as the organizational culture that you work in. Hakim, within the context of relationships, how, how do you best support a partner when they're saying, I'm burnt out. I've, 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 I've reached the end of my candlestick. What's the best way that we can show up for each other to support each other through a phase of burnout? Sure. Um, so I, I always, um, I always reference what are your, what are your self-care practices? You know, with you and your partner, your partner is burning out or your partner has burned out, they're tapping out, they don't feel they have the energy. You know your partner and your partner knows you. What are, what are your self-care practices? Um, where do you go to? to um, I think throughout the year, we build so much pressure because of work, because of deliverables, because of um, KPIs, because of, you know, holiday season is coming, I need to have returns. There's so much pressure that builds up. But throughout the year, what has your self-care practice been? And has it been working? If it hasn't been working, then perhaps you and your partner need, need to really look at um, what are we going to actually take care of ourselves? What are we actually going to um, re-energize ourselves? You know what I mean? And if, it's, if the things that you're doing to take care of yourself, body, mind, heart, mind, mind, heart, calibration, if the things that you've been doing to take care of yourself haven't been um, haven't been working, then maybe you need to re-look at everything. You need to re-look at how you're taking care of yourself. Because it, it is important for you to actually stop with your partner and say, hey, one, two, three is working for me. One, two, three is working for you. How about we build a bridge and we combine what's working and let go of what isn't working, right? Yeah. So we need, to take, we need to take care of our mental health. We need to take care of our emotional health. We need to take care of our physical health. If we've been lacking in any one of the three, oh, and gut health as well. We need to take care of gut health. If we've been lacking in any of the four oceans, then we need to take care of them. We need to go back to actually taking care of ourselves and taking care of the relationship. Because what we do internally is going to reflect on how we do everything externally. You know what I mean? So, and just to add to um, um, what this is saying right now, if you do feel burnt out and you don't have a healthy culture at your workplace, you might need to consider coming to see me. I'll help you out with that one. So, I got it. <laughs> Okay. So, I think we're going to have to say bye. I can't say I'm not saying you now. Um, but I want to say thank you. I think we're going to try, maybe try and find and we schedule that we really love you guys. Um, but I can't hear myself. I want you to I send the comments. I can you guys can hear me. 
Okay. No. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Bye.